Will Eric Ten Hag be manager of Manchester United next season? What are Ineos thinking? What's going on? What I want to do in this video is kind of remove my opinion. I've just given you my opinion in the live show this morning in the reaction last night. And let's be honest, it was a brutal, brutal game. But what I want to do in this video is run through some of this article from Laurie Whitwell from The Athletic. I'll leave the link in the description for the full article. There's going to be a ton more information that I don't actually run through because I think that'll be slightly unfair. But I want to run through some top line points because ultimately, and I don't mean this disrespectfully to you or to me, but my opinion doesn't matter. Your opinion doesn't matter. What Ineos decide to do is what is going to drive the decision at our club and whether or not Eric Ten Hag is manager next season. So I'm going to run through some key points here. And there's a big one straight away. All right, let's run into let's run through this. Laurie's written this that no decision has been made on Eric Ten Hag's future, but Man United are planning for next season with him as manager. He's been included included, sorry, in meetings about recruitment, about the medical department. He's making calls on hotels and training facilities as part of the preseason tour. Eric Ten Hag very much is being involved in the plans for next year, currently. And this bit down here is important too. Several figures around the club feel that Ten Hag deserves the chance to operate in a genuine football structure. We know that we've never had that. And I'll be honest, you could say that about pretty much every manager. Every manager post-Fergie has deserved to work in a genuine football structure. No one's ever had the opportunity, apart from maybe Ten Hag. United's consistently long injury list is viewed internally as genuine mitigation, and there are other mitigating factors. I remember last season, and this is something I personally, well, maybe I'm underestimating this. I think as a fan, I look at the credit that Ten Hag built up, especially how good we were post-World Cup to winning the League Cup there. Still probably my favourite post-Fergie photo of that. I don't know. Love that one. It probably wasn't my favourite. I reckon Solskjaer. Anyway. Ten Hag does deserve to work in a new football structure. Uh, this this morning, my, my opinion after the Chelsea game has been the one where I... I felt myself sort of drifting between the two. And I know a lot of that was emotionally driven. So I'm glad I didn't do that video I thought I was going to do this morning. I'm glad I've waited for this information. All right. But Laura is reporting the Man United currently are planning with Eric Ten Hag as the manager. Go down here a bit more detail here. And this has kind of always been part of the problem. Ashworth and Barada are both going to be in charge, really, entrusted to lead on a decision over Ten Hag, whether he stays or his replacement. And neither of them are at the club right now. And there's two names. I mean, Gareth Southgate. I'm convinced that Gareth Southgate is literally linked because it's like, who's Ashworth worked before? Is it? Go on, let's get him in there. Graham Potter as well, linked with the niche job. It's, I would call them managerial links of convenience. Like you're an average detective and you can just do, uh, who has Ashworth worked with before? He's worked with Potter. Go on, then, put him in there, throw him in there. Oh yeah, but Browser was going to bring him in at Nice. Yeah, go on then, throw him in there. Same goes for Gareth Southgate. I think no matter what happens with Eric Ten Hag, there's no way that United are going to pivot away from Eric Ten Hag to Gareth Southgate, the king pragmatist. It's just not happening. All right. Uh, down here, Ashworth typically wants time to assess places before he makes a decision. Look, three month, it's called the 100 day review. It happens a lot with any sort of senior appointment. It's expected that they get the 100 days to come in and go, yeah, let's have a look at everything in our club. And then we make decisions rather than making quick decisions. Down here, Ten Hag is described as being open to operating as that head coach and feels alignment with both Ratcliffe and Brailsford on their vision. And Brailsford right now is kind of the de facto CEO of Manchester United. He's the man who's come in. He's the man who's been leading this process the entire time because we can't get Ashworth in. Barada is on gardening leave. Wilcox is even going to be a bit of a problem. I'll speak about Wilcox next. But he's been the man leading the changes that have happened so far. And right now, Ineos are not... Look, this is something I thought... This, this, this was kind of a part of my reason as to why I thought things may have changed after that Chelsea game. Because I saw the Champions League as like... The Champions League and qualifying for it has been a major factor in when Manchester United managers previously have gone. Now, Laurie reporting here that the Champions League is not regarded as pivotal to Ten Hag, 
but the results and performances are going to form the basis of the review. Maybe that changes things. Now, it's not to say that our performances and results have been perfect because they haven't been. How many games have we lost this season? Results-wise, it's been atrocious. Performance-wise, that Brentford game. Newcastle before we played Chelsea last time. Oi, two standout horrible ones. Results-wise, you've got the highs of the, the Liverpool and the FA Cup and you've got the lows of Brentford. Uh, but even against Chelsea, it's like, if you really want to pick out the good parts in that game, there were some really good parts. Come from 2-0 down, the goals that we scored the second and third, certain football, certain build-up, it was... But we lost 4-3, so it ultimately doesn't matter because football is a results-driven game. But we've got Liverpool next. It's probably Liverpool, Coventry in the FA Cup semi, and then hopefully the FA Cup final. We're going to be the three biggest games left this season that can really have a lasting impact, maybe on Ten Hag's credibility inside Ineos. But currently, as it stands... Ineos are not just thinking, oh, let's, let's sack him, let's get rid of him, like, let's, let's start all over again. The opposite. They're standing firm currently. Now, what they're not standing firm with is John Murto. And this is, this should be, if you want to get a positive, a real positive out of this video, it's this. That John Murto is leaving. There were whispers, and they never really went past whispers, but whispers that suggested that maybe, Maybe John Murto could be reworked into a different role at Manchester United. Now, I've done a video on the on the improvement of our Manchester United's academy. And I've explained how John Murto did a lot of good work there. He got over-promoted. He got put into a position where he didn't know what he was doing because the Glazers didn't want to bring external influence in and reduce their power grip. So they just internally promoted people who weren't, let's be honest, fit for the job and they haven't been able to do the job properly. And the damage has now been done. Darren Fletcher, I think, is an easier person to reposition Jason Wilcox coming in there and you can see this is quite an interesting one here Jason Wilcox is expected to engage daily with the United manager and provide a link to the hierarchy sort of indicating there that the technical director when they come Jason Wilcox will be the man who Eric Ten Hag speaks to and maybe Dan Ashworth will be sat above kind of controlling and overseeing rather than Dan Ashworth being too involved on a day-to-day -day basis with Eric Ten Hagen conversations. Jason Wilcox will be your middleman there, just in the same way that Dan Ashworth would be the middleman between Barada and that's how hierarchies work, right? But I thought that was quite an interesting one. But John Murto, it looks like he's going to be leaving completely, clean slate. And this is a little final bit here. This is what Laurie said. Ideally, those in the Ineos regime do not want to rip it up and start again. Ten Hag's fingerprints have been felt throughout United and the changes above him are regarded as enough for one summer. And bear in mind, right, we, this summer so far, we've got a new CEO, we're getting a sporting director, we're going to get a technical director. We may well also get new coaches, which is an interesting one I'm going to speak to next. But the suggestion here is that Ineos don't want to do all of that and get a new manager at the same time. And if, if, I, if I go back to the emotions of last night, the emotions of what I've saw, and I just think about the results and I focus on the football, then I could easily argue that, oh, let's, let's get a new manager. Let's get Eric Ten Hag out. And if I step back now and I really think about it again, I go, well, actually, well, we're getting a CEO. We're getting a sporting director. There's all these changes happening behind the scenes. Is that really the right environment to then bring a new manager into? And then I would say probably not. And that's what I mean. You can get torn between. And that's... Well, what happened in the live show this morning? That was probably one of the worst live shows, I think. Not worst, but one of the most difficult live shows. Because it was the first one where I really started to question Eric Ten Hag. Simply because I was my main focus of that was, well, if we're not going to make Champions League, are any of us really going to keep them on? Him on? That's why I think that. Well, that's what I thought. So I'm glad I held back on it. Um, Ten Hag's overriding preference is to continue with United, but look at United, but look at this. Some internal conversations have centered on whether a reshuffle of his coaching staff is required, including the addition of a new voice at assistant level. So maybe Ineos would look to help Eric Ten Hag with coaches rather than replacing him and bringing every and bringing in a completely new set. That's just a sort of a byline towards the end, rather than this is definitely going to happen. But as it stands. As I said, I'll leave the link to it. There is so much more detail on this that I haven't, I haven't run through in this video. So the link's in the description. Go and read it there. But Ineos, according to The Athletic and Laurie Whitwell, as it stands, are planning for next season with Eric Ten Hag. The, the focus of whether or not they're going to keep him on is performances and results rather than Champions League qualification. And in that sense, 
this game against Liverpool on Sunday might be bigger than I thought it was. Because I was looking at the Chelsea game as the bigger of the two, because if you lost that, well, you're already out of the Champions League. So how much does that Liverpool game really matter? But maybe it really, really does. But as it stands, Ineos are backing Eric Ten Hag, according to The Athletic. Are you?